Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna cover three things that you're gonna be surprised by once you give the exam and also once you receive the results because you're doing this for your immigration. So this video is important and short. I'll get to the point. The first one is there are in listening and reading tests, there are one to two unscored items, which means there could be an extra set of tasks. So in listening, typically, you should have only six listening parts. The fifth one is the video. Everything else is audio and questions. So you should have only six, typically, but you might get seven or eight in your exam. Now, when we talk about reading, you should just have four reading parts, but you might end up getting five or six. Now, again, in the four typical reading parts, you will get everything with text and questions, but part two is where you have a picture that you have to read and analyze followed up with questions. So people sometimes would get two pictures, and that means part two has been repeated twice. It does not mean that there are two picture questions. Typically, it just means that a task has been repeated more than once. Once you get this in reading and listening, it is called an unscored task. Again, for example, in listening, if you were supposed to get six tasks and you got seven, one of the seven is unscored. Now, the problem is you don't know which one it is. You will never get to know which one is the unscored item. So what this does is it makes your exam a little bit longer. You will get a little more tired in the exam, but it is done for CELPIP to see which question types are best to use for their next tests, for their surveys. It helps them understand the questions better, the exam better. Remember, it is called an unscored item. It is not that you will get the best out of seven. So again, it should be six things that are marked, right, in the listening part, and you got seven, you're not gonna get the best six out of seven. Whatever is the unscored item, the unscored task will just be unscored, you wouldn't know which one it is. So what you have to do is do your best, because you can never tell which one is the unscored item. You should do your best in every task, because any one of them could be marked. So when you get this in the exam, do not be surprised. Remember, typically you should get six tasks in listening and four in reading. But if you get a few extra, don't worry, this happens almost all the time. But this is important, this is part of CELPIP to develop its exams. Now the second surprise you would get, and this is the case with many exams, including PT Core, in the speaking module or in writing, just, just before the speaking part starts, or during the speaking part, you will have distractions you will have other people talking in the exam in the room just like you because everybody is recording their speaking on the computer. So you will hear background noises. A lot of candidates are not prepared for that and that's why I always recommend when you practice speaking at home, turn on some news in the background, not songs, news, because you need to hear people talking and practice that distraction. You don't get noise cancellation headphones. So you practice distraction where people are talking in the background and you are still focused on your speaking. The best thing I tell here is just imagine that you are in a restaurant. People talk there too and you're talking to your friends. Do you really get distracted from everybody else? No, because you're dialed in with your friend. You're focused on what you're talking about. So make sure you are focused on the question and a lot of these questions ask you to talk to a friend, to talk to your spouse, etc. So imagine you're in that real life scenario, talking to them, take interest in this topic and you will not get distracted. But of course, at home practice, doing this with distraction so you're not shocked in the real exam. The final thing is, and this is new, because this average score thing came last year. And a lot of us thought that, well, this is great for immigration because, you know, if you get a few nines and a few sevens, you'll get an average eight. And eight is your immigration requirement, great. But unfortunately for many of you, most of you, the average score does not matter. And again, for each individual case, it's different. It's best to contact your immigration lawyer about this. But for many of you, the rules remain unchanged. If you needed a CLB-9, you need a CLB-9 across the board. It's not like if you get three modules 9, one module 8, your average is 9, you're good to go. No, you need to score 9 across the board in all modules so that the requirement still remains the same. The average, unfortunately, does not help. So make sure to review this with your lawyer as well. But again, in almost all cases I have seen, there is no bypassing that rule that each module needs needs to be over a certain level. 
Now, in 2024, express entry requirements have gone up, unfortunately, but again, CELPIP remains the easiest exam to get the score requirement. You need a 10 out of 12 in some cases or 9 out of 12, which is still giving you some margin to make mistakes. But again, 10, 9, these are high scores to get. If you want to ensure you get the score, you want a guaranteed result with a money back guarantee so you can have the peace of mind, check out our course in the description. It includes all four modules, mock tests, tips and tricks, and everything you need to have a successful 9 or 10 plus in the self-up exam. And I hope that you are now aware of these three surprises and are more prepared for your exam. All the best. <laughs>